This is the Giant Trinity Advanced Pro of Matthew Bottrell and his Giant Trinity Advanced Pro TT. Now, the reason for the two bikes is that, well, Matt isn't really a triathlete, although he has dabbled. He is, in fact, an ex-pro cyclist, but hear me out here. Now, Matt is, I guess, a bit of a guru when it comes to time trialing, aerodynamics, and just generally going fast, which is why he coaches some of the top triathletes out there. I mean, Tim Don to his Ironman record time, Susie Cheatham, Lucy Charles, Rachel Joyce, Will Clark, and even Tim O'Brack to his challenge, Rothwin. And that's all before we discuss his own accolades. He has a 10 mile PB of 17 minutes and 40 seconds. That's fast. And he is the UK champ for the 10 mile, 25 mile, 50 mile, and 100 mile. And then just a couple of years ago, he tried triathlon out, which is why we have his triathlon bike here. So I thought it'd be really interesting to take a look at his pure TT bike versus his triathlon bike, see how he's adapted to triathlon, if there are any changes. And well, maybe you could all take some tips from it. So I think we need to take a closer look. So to start off with, we're gonna look at his pure TT bike, the Giant Trinity Advanced Pro TT, which he is riding in a medium. First of all, we're gonna have a look at the cockpit. So this is Giant's standard base bar, but off of that, we have a few customizations. Now, Matt's known for his very aerodynamic and aggressive position. He's worked closely with Simon Smart from Drag to Zero over the years to get that dialed in. So we do have the Drag to Zero armrests, elbow cups here, the Drag to Zero poles, which have a nice ski bend in. But you may have noticed the customization here, which is the adapter. Now, Matt has actually designed and had these made himself up in Scotland. They allow him to bring his elbow rests back slightly and then this angled position for aerodynamics. So with time trialing and aerodynamics, literally everything is thought about, which is why if you look closely at this bike, there's this carbon effect tape throughout. And that is basically covering all the bolts and openings on the frame, including down here on the crank set. And that's simply to smoothen out the airflow over them. So really like every detail is thought about, including where the Garmin is positioned. So Matt prefers to have it towards the end of the poles so that he doesn't have to move his head. So he's got his numbers within his field of view. So he's staying in that nice aero tuck and these grips are actually made by racewear with the Garmin mount built in specifically for the drag to zero poles. And then on the end of these poles, we have the Shimano Dura-Ace Di2 shifters, which control the rear mech. And then down on the base bar, on the end of the bull horns, we have the shifters and levers, which control the front mech. In terms of braking, as you'd expect with a time trial bike, the brakes are hidden. So the front brake is behind the fork and then the rear brake is below the bottom bracket with its own aero covering shell. They're moving back through the bike and to the crank set and things start to get quite interesting because he has a 58 tooth outer ring, which is pretty beefy, and then a 42 tooth inner ring. Now there's obviously quite a big jump between a 58 tooth and a 42 tooth, which is why he's got the chain catcher here. Because basically when you shift down from a 58 tooth to a 42 tooth, there is the risk of it throwing the chain off. So the chain catchers there is a nice safeguard. And and they're attached to the Quark D0 power meter and cranks, which he's running a 170 crank length in. And then on the end of those, he's got the Speedplay Aero pedals. Now, as I've mentioned already, the bike is fully kitted out with Shimano Dura-Ace Di2. So this is the 9150 rear mech and front mech. And you'll probably have noticed the rather large, large pulley wheels here. And that is because they are the ceramic speed oversized pulley wheels and basically help to smoothen out that chain flow and reduce any friction through any tight angles. And then he's also running an 1128 cassette. And then for the finishing touches, he has the giant aero bottle and then for his saddle he's got the new ism pn 3.0 saddle which has a split nose design allowing him to get nicely forward on the saddle tilt his hips around and into his well-known aero position 
Uh, with his wheels, he's running an MV 7.8 wheel on the front with a Continental GP Supersonic tyre, which is a clincher tyre, and he's running that in a 23mm width. And then on the back, we've got the rather obvious disc wheel, which is the drag to zero disc wheel. And on that, he's actually running a tubular tyre. It's the Continental Podium TT tyre, and that is a Pro Limited tyre. And he's running that in a 25mm width. And now on to Matt's triathlon bike, and this is the Giant Trinity Advanced Pro. And Matt actually said that he didn't change much between his position on the TT bike to his triathlon bike, but there are still some quite noticeable differences because the head tube length is ever so slightly longer on this bike. So to allow Matt to get into the same position, he's actually had to opt for a size small rather than the medium that he has on his TT bike. And another quite obvious difference is the storage. So we have integrated storage on this bike. So we have a storage system on the top tube for his gels. And then, although he hasn't actually got it on at the moment, there is a bottle that you can attach to the head tube and it comes out, it's integrated, and then a straw that comes through the aero bars. And then with his cockpit, not much changes again. We've still got the drag to zero rests and poles. It's the same base bar and even the same adapters that he had on his TT bike. But the thing that does change is the group set. So we have SRAM ETAP kitted out through the bike. So we have the gear shifters on the end. But interestingly, he doesn't have the blips that you'd normally find on the base bar. And in fact, he's taken it a step further. He doesn't have bar tape at all. And that is all for aerodynamics. And then moving on to the crank set and things get even more interesting again, because he is running a 60 tooth outer chain ring. And there I was thinking my 55 tooth was big. Um, and interesting, there isn't an inner chain ring. There is no small ring. He's running a single chain ring setup. And there is a good reason for that, but we'll speak to Matt later to find out more detail as to why that is. Uh, but because it is a single ring setup, the, the ring does have slightly longer teeth to make sure that the chain stays on. And he also has this K-Edge front mech chain catcher system. Um, that is all attached to the Quark power meter, which again, he's running in a 170 crank length. And then on the end of those, he has the speed play aero pedals. And then to the back of the bike, we've got the SRAM Red ETAP rear mech. And again, we've got the Ceramic Speed OSPW jockey wheels. And actually both bikes are fully kitted out with Ceramic Speed bearings on both bottom brackets and headset bearings. And then to finish off his gearing, he's got the SRAM Red cassette and an 1128. Now onto his wheel and tire choice. And Matt actually has a long-standing partnership with Envy Wheels. So he has the Envy 7.8 front and rear wheel wheel but onto the tires things get a little bit interesting because they look like the Continental Grand Prix TT tire and the supersonic tire but I have a sneaky suspicion they're not I think they might be a pro limited tire but that aside they are clincher tires and they are both a 23 on the front and the rear a finishing piece on this bike is the ISM PN 1.0 saddle. Now, Matt's actually said he's enjoyed using the new ISM PN 3.0 saddle so much that he is going to be replacing this saddle. But I think it's about time we got Matt in to talk about these bikes. Okay, Matt, so we've got both of your bikes set up here. We've got your pure TT bike and a more triathlon specific bike here. Obviously, you came to triathlon a couple of years ago. Are there any changes that you made? Uh, no, when I came into triathlon, I didn't really have to make that much of a change. I'd, you know, I'd ridden, you know, I've ridden a bike since I was 12, time trialing from the age of 18. So I'd had like, you know, nearly 20, 20 years in this position. So, you know, for me, it was kind of, my my weapon was the, the bike, so I wanted to make a, a big advantage of that. So you, yeah, kept the same position when you came over. Yeah, and, and I didn't have any troubles, you know, like running off the bike or, or anything like that. I guess that. that comes down to practice and doing it in your training. Definitely, I think that's the biggest mistake that most, you know, like triathletes specifically are making. They, they get set up on the bikes, but they don't train enough in those positions. Okay, and probably 
quite a noticeable change on this bike is that you've got a single ring chain ring set up and it's a massive 62 so <laughs> you're clearly using this for something other than just triathlon racing yeah this is actually quite you know it's probably one of the fastest bikes out there so you'd say more so than that bike yeah this is kind of this has got more regulations this is kind of like a uci setup that you know you'd see like the, the pros ride in but there's no regulations with this, as you can see, with you know, with the the aero handlebar, it's a it's a wider handlebar. Same with the fork, there's no uh, three to one regulation. So this is a it's for you know those real fast courses. This is the bike of choice. Okay, so why would you go for the single ring? It's so. just to save a few watts. You know, there's probably two and a half watts within that front, front changer. So it's all these marginal gains. It's like for me, if I was riding a national championship, that I'd be able to make. Yeah, and I mean, single ring chain rings, uh, we've talked about a lot lately, but it's not really anything new, is it? No, we were riding like single chain rings, you know, in the early 90s, but obviously it's, it's gone full circle again. And uh, yeah, everybody's just trying to find these marginal gains. But, you know, there's a lot more design now in terms of, you know, it's like this chain ring here, it's got longer teeth, so it's less prone to chucking the chain. Okay, and I mean, a 60 tooth chain ring to a lot of our viewers will sound absolutely nuts, but what is the idea behind that? Again, it's all about chain line efficiency. So if we can say, you know, if we're not, we've not got these massive crossovers, then we're gonna ultimately save, uh, save drag. So, you know, it might be a couple of watts that we're gonna save by having the correct chain line. Brilliant. And I've noticed obviously you've got a disc wheel on the TT bike. Um, you probably still use a disc wheel for some triathlons, but when do you choose to and not to use one? Uh, I kind of, I think the thing is, it's like with the disc on those faster courses, then I would always opt for the, the disc option. Uh, if you're, you know, what I do like about the disc, it's almost like it gives you forward lift. Uh, especially, you know, like if you're going for, the, you know, it's like those real high speeds. And this is quite a light disc. So even on a, like a hilly course, you know, you, you could take could take this option. But I would say for me, predominantly, it's more when I'm going for like a faster time, I look for that that disc wheel. Well, that was really interesting. So thanks very much, Matt. I think a lot of our GTN viewers are going to be getting very aero soon. If you'd like to see more videos from GTN, just click on the globe. And if you'd like to see my coast athlete, Lucy Charles's pro bike, click on the link below. And if you'd like to see how to use power, just click on the video below.